Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is September 8th of 2017. And I want to talk a little bit about this, the Equifax hack. 143 million people had their data hacked from Equifax, a credit reporting agency. I think there's like three of three of them. Uh, TransUnion, Equifax, uh, TransUnion, Equifax. What is the other one? I can't remember. Anyway, Equifax, Equifax was hacked. Um, 143 million people had their data taken. There's only about 300 million people in the United States, so half of the people have had their data taken. Uh, the data consists of everything. Uh, name, address, uh, social security number, driver ID number, uh, just about everything. Uh, so they have a, a link that you can click on, which I just did an hour or so ago. That's why if I seem a little bit upset. Uh, and you put in your last name and you put in the last uh, six digits of your social security number and they tell you whether you are one of the 143 million people. I am. Uh, then they have a remedy. Uh, you, uh, well, when you put that information in that they want, it tells you, which it did in my case, okay, you're one of the people who had your data taken. And uh, then if you click on the next link, it tells you, okay, and it gives you a date. They gave me a date of next week. Uh, on that date, uh, you have to come on that date specifically, not the next day, not the day before, that date. They do, they're not going to send you any uh, email telling you that you're one of the people, you know. Uh, they're not going to send you an email reminding you that, hey, today's the day you need to. So when you go there, I haven't gone there yet because... Uh, they gave me my date for next week. When you go there, uh, from reading these other stories, you have to agree that you're not going to sue them. Never occurred to me to sue them. But you, when you go there and click, you have to agree that you're not going to sue them and a bunch of other things. And then they will give you for free their credit monitoring program, access to their credit monitoring program, which I am sure will tell you if someone has uh, gone and checked your credit rating, which the person could do, you know, who has the, one of the, you know, has this data, and it would, see, I'm sure it would tell you, let's see if somebody has access to your, done, pull the credit report on you. Uh, if I knew, uh, charge account or something has been opened in your name, information like that. Now, the other, let me go back here. The other thing is the Equifax executives sold off some stock before this hack was dis disclosed the other day. That has got to be, if it's a public company, which I'm sure it is, on the New York Stock Exchange, I'm sure. That has got to be, well, let's see. Wikipedia. No, trans. I put TransUnion in that, didn't I? Well, anyway, that has got to be, what do, you, what do they call that? Anyway, it's got to be, you're not allowed to uh, profit 
from information like that if you're in oh, that insider trading. That has got to be insider trading, which should be against the law. What well, is against the law? And I think we need a law like China has. Apparently in China, if you commit uh, financial fraud, if you cheat somebody out of it, I forget what the amount of money, it's not very much money. I think it's a few thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars, something like that. You get the death penalty. And I'm in favor. I'm opposed. By the way, I'm opposed, as you all know, if you follow my videos, I am opposed to the death penalty, positively for numerous reasons, which I have explained, and other people have also come out against the death penalty for those same basic reasons. I'm opposed to the death penalty, except in cases like this. You know, the New York Stock Exchange has that, they ring the bell at the end of day for trading, they ring the bell. And they have a platform way up there. And executives come out if you're the head of a new company or a new company was just listed on the New York Stock Exchange or if you're a major bank or somebody like that, you get to come out and they take your picture and you get to be seen on TV because a lot of news stations will be, okay, it's uh, the New York Stock Exchange is closing. We're now switching to the New York Stock Exchange. And they're going to ring the bell. And uh, it's up there like a balcony on the Buckingham Palace where the royalty comes out and waves to the surf. I can't do the royal wave. I'm not, I'm not British enough. Uh, now, occasionally they'll have Sully, the pilot or whatever, who landed the airplane and saved the passengers. They'll have the seven astronauts or something come out. They'll have people like that. A police officer or maybe the 9-11 uh, firemen, you know, the ones that survived, some that survived would come out. But if, you know, for PR purposes or whatever. But those people should never go, they should never set foot on that platform. Everybody else, all those financial executives and all those people who set foot on that platform. We should be taking down their names. When the dictatorship of the proletariat comes, and we've gone as far right as we should in the United States as we should be able to go, when it swings in the other direction, we should have those names of those people. I'm exaggerating, I'm trying to be, I'm being a little, uh, Please don't report me to the FBI for being a communist. Um, nah, I don't really fucking care. Those people, I've been favor of the death penalty for not the heroes that go there and not the firefighters and the, but for those bankers and those other people. This is these people are, it's a, cons you know, talk about conspiracy, obstruction of justice, treason. I think that's what these people, all these people are. These stories, uh, they never, you know, they never end. There's covers up, cover, cover ups. Uh, TransUnion, I went, I did, couldn't find it. I, I'm pretty sure it was TransUnion. Year, they're one of the three. And somebody's probably going to come back and tell me, hey, there's actually five. I don't know. I've always seen like three. When you want to get, when you want to get a credit card, when you want to get a uh, credit account with with an eight with some some place or whatever you want, everything you want to do, you want a, to rent an apartment, you want to buy a home. Everybody, all the business people, all the people, they use the numbers that they get from TransUnion, Equifax, and the other company. Those are the numbers that are given. And these people have continually commit so many crimes 
And if they're not crimes, which they're crimes, but if they're not crimes, they're things that they're, they shouldn't be doing. Um, and they impact us, and these people are um, and they hold a major power. You know, they can squeeze, if you're a man, they can squeeze your testicles and they can get away with it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was TransUnion. I was going to try it, I couldn't find because there were so many things. I did a search for TransUnion, uh, TransUnion to see, uh, pull up the story about, and I'm pretty sure it was them. If it was one of the others, they're all the same kind of cocksuckers. Uh... Not that that's a bad thing. Uh, so I thought it was TransUnion. Years ago, the federal government found out that, and I think it was TransUnion, they were taking the data that is supposed to be private data, all the data they have collected on people, they were taking that data and they were selling it to companies. If you had enough money uh, and you were in a power position or whatever, you could contact them and you could get names, addresses, all kinds of data would be given to you that, that you could use in some way for advertising purposes, for all types of service. That was against the law. That was a crime. And the federal government I forget which agency it was. Whichever agency it is is not powerful enough. Of course, under the Trump administration, all those agencies will be uh, done away with, anything that tries to enforce regulations. And if anybody, if, the, if Trump puts somebody in charge of it, he'll put somebody in charge of it who wants to do away with the agency or uh, do away with all regulation or whatever. We need more regulation. I think we have too many laws, but I don't think we have too many regulations. Houston, I'm in Texas by the way, Houston has been famous for, and they were happy to, to put the information out, that Houston had very little rules and regulations about zoning and building standards and uh, all that type of stuff and they have had a they had a housing boom because people could you could get a house cheaper a little bit cheaper you could get an apartment cheaper uh, all kinds of stuff going on because there was very few regulations and that was one of Houston's things that they put the word out about hey this is fucking Texas. And not only that, our our city here, we don't have regulations, so it's going to be easy to get to, to buy a house, rent a house, or whatever, because we don't have regulations. You know, a hog factory next door to you? Fine. Uh, you're in a, a low flood area? Fine, no rules, or, you know... Uh, there's a nuclear power plant uh, next door to your kid's school. No regulation. Now, if some up here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, they started having earthquakes. Earthquakes in Texas. And I've only been here for, I don't know, five or six or seven years or something, I forget, in Texas. But people who lived here all their, you know, cowboys who lived here all their lives, families who have lived in, you know, these areas for generations. Uh, earthquakes? I never heard of earthquakes in Texas. Earthquakes in Texas? But they were getting earthquakes uh, thrown stones throw from here. I think I felt one one day. I think I blogged about it. Uh, just one, though. But on the other side of town, 
not Fort Worth, but you know, the, I forget the area. They were having them all the time, several a day. People couldn't, you know, people couldn't fucking believe it. It was like they didn't need a rocking chair. They could just sit on their couch or in the kitchen on the stool and get rocked. And, uh, of course, fracking had started. They would, you know, open up a hole in the ground and pressure shoot uh, tons of water into the ground with chemicals in the water, which they wouldn't tell you what was the chemicals were. Uh, but they said, don't worry, you know, just harmless chemicals that are going into your groundwater. And then the earthquake started, and people who had lived here, Texans, all their lives, said, what in the fuck is going on with these earthquakes? It's got to be because of this oil fracking. And so one or two towns, especially one town, uh, they passed a city ordinance in the town saying, okay, no more fracking in the city limits of, you know, our small town here. You just can't do any fracking in the city. And then another town was going to do, you know, was going to pass the same thing. And the Texas state legislature, which is, of course, all Republican, uh, they passed a law, a state law, so that supersedes, that's over the the city ordinances or whatever. Texas legislature passed a law. Well, first the legislature told the city, no, no, you don't, you, we don't want you doing that. Don't, don't pass that ordinance. The fracking is good for Texas. It's good for America. USA, USA, USA. It's good for America. Don't pass an ordinance, you know. Uh, by the way, they pumped this stuff, you know, water with chemicals down in the ground. And uh, I think actually, they, I'm not sure if, I'm sure it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be Texas. They were eventually, uh, I think because of federal regulations, uh, forced to tell what the chemicals were that were being pumped in the ground. And of course, the chemicals that were going with the water, and uh, by the way, Texas is, I guess, usually under a drought condition. Uh, uh, so this is a, has been, in order to get this, force the water down, which forces the oil up or the natural gas up, takes a tremendous amount of water. And uh, so they were forced to tell what the chemical makeup of their proprietary, you know, injection fluid was, which was a bunch of bullshit, you know. And of course it's bad shit. <laughs> you don't want to drink it. You don't want it even diluted. You don't even want it diluted. You don't want that shit. You don't want your kids drinking it. You don't want that seeping out of the ground or anything else is chemical. But then, of course, the oil men who were pumping this and still are, not just in Texas now, but all over. They're having earthquakes in other, you know, <laughs> other places now that are not used to earthquakes. Uh, the, the men said, oh, now, wait a minute. The, uh, the chemicals we're putting down, it's only, you know, I don't know what the exact number was. It's only 0.01%. It's only 0.01%. It's one hundredth of a percent. You know, it's, uh, whatever the number was, of course it didn't take very long for environmental groups, in fact, right away they could do it, and say, Yes, uh, you're pumping in blah, 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 number of gallons of water, and the chemical that is with it is point whatever it is, zero, zero, one, or whatever the fucking percentage is. And that is X number of gallons and gallons and gallons of this toxic chemical going in. Uh, I went to real estate school. I even graduated from real estate school a long time ago. That was one of the 
one of the little techniques that you know that part of what we learned you know you have a person wanting to sell their house and a person wanting to buy a house and there's a difference of x number you know the seller wants x amount and the and the buyer only wants to pay this amount and there's a difference there of a big gap of money so you don't say well now you know the there's just twenty thousand dollars worth of difference, you know. Can, why can't you uh, you do it percentage wise? Well, there's, you know, you're only one percent apart, just one percent things like this. this is the same kind of bullshit that we we got going on. So back to the subject. Oh, I was TransUnion. I'm pretty sure they were the one that, as I mentioned before. Back in the past, they were giving, again, which was against the law, giving data on all of us, personal data, that could be used by corporations and who knows, who knows all. So, um, they were fined, and I remember at the time, it was, it was made headlines, the largest fine ever levied against a, uh, financial institution or against or whatever, I forget what the exact, you know, delimiters or parameters or whatever it was, but it was a tremendous fine. I don't remember signing up for a class action suit, but maybe I did get something and just fill my name out or something. I don't remember ever doing that, but, but I got an email or maybe something came through the mail and then I had to log in. But uh, they explained that a class action lawsuit had been taken out against TransUnion and TransUnion uh, had uh, lost the case or agreed to a settlement. And uh, the lawyers who took on this class action suit, they were going to get, well, I can't even count that high. They were, you know, millions and millions and millions because it was a big settlement, millions of dollars, tons of dollars. Remember the McScrooge uh, cartoons where the Uncle Scrooge, who's so rich, you know, he has a swimming pool that he dives into. It's all money and coins, or whatever. He has a bulldozer for it in his pool or whatever to push the money around, that kind of money. Kind of money that drug dealers, you know, you've probably seen the TV shows and the movies and things like that where the drug dealers take in, their, you know, their major problem is not the police. It's not the law enforcement, court system, the justice systems. Their problem, it's not even distribution, hell, they, they use submarines, they use tunnels under the ground. Uh, people swallow bags of drug that's not getting the drugs into the United States or wherever they go their fucking problem is they have they get so much money they got it in warehouses what the fuck are we going to do with all this money they can't go to the bank with the money and say you know, uh, I got a semi trailer truck out here with uh, for, I want to make a deposit you know because deposit uh where did this come from? And this time, you know, so they have to find some way to launder the money, and that's not taking it to the laundromat down the street and putting it in the washing machines, you know. Uh, but of course, they don't have any trouble because they just go to banks, U.S. banks, other banks. Just they just go there and make some kind of a deal. Uh, the bank will. Okay, I tell you what. We got this building down the street that's falling apart and we're going to you're going to you're going to buy that for hundred million dollars we'll give you a loan and you're going to owe us a hundred million dollars but you're not going to have to pay us back so just give it and it's, I don't understand how it works if I understood how it works I wouldn't be in my cell here I wouldn't be living with my ex-wife. 
I would be I'd be in Switzerland or New Zealand. I'd be on a beach, a beach not getting flooded because of global warming. Anyway, so TransUnion got fined this tremendous amount of money. Oh, and the class I, and the lawyers get tons of money. And then people like myself, hey, now as the settlement, you know, we as the lawyers, of course, we were out tremendous amounts of money because of all the money we had to spend uh, lawyering up and doing this lawsuit. Of course, we get all this money, but uh, you can either, either have, I forget what it was, five or ten dollars. Uh, now keep in mind there's millions of you, you know, but you can, you know, each get five dollars or ten dollars, something like that. Or you can get uh, a free credit monitoring service. And so I, saw, I said, uh, give me the free credit monitoring, sir. I don't need five or ten bucks. Give me the free credit monitoring. I didn't need the credit monitoring service either, but so I got it. That was uh, Credit Karma. And then right after that, Credit Karma, which had been charging for their their service, credit monitoring service, they just made it available to everybody. They have advertising on it, you know. So you go there and they try to get you to sign up for a credit card or a secured credit card or something like that. But then they just made it available to everybody anyway. And guess what? Equifax here had the data from 143 million people hacked from them. And guess what? They are offering a free credit monitoring service provided you agree not to sue them and not to do, I forget what the other, not to do a bunch of other things. So there you have the American system. USA, USA. Number one. So I think that's that's it. I I see I forgot to put if you go to Jim Howard dot blog, but you can just click on here any of these links and I think any of these news links that you see too, like CNN or whatever, I'm sure. Uh if you go down here okay here it is, you know, like this. How to find out if you've been affected by the Equifax hack. Okay, I don't see where it is, but I don't want to take up. I just took up. Uh, but you just go there and uh, you'll find it. Maybe when I, after I take my nap, because getting all mad like this pisses me off and makes me tired. Maybe I'll go back and put it in. Oops. So there you have it. Uh, by the way, I, I think I mentioned this. Equifax isn't going to fix anything for you. They're offering the free monitoring service that you can go to and they will look and tell you, you know, hey, somebody accessed your, somebody opened up a, a to uh, charge account at some place, uh, something, but through their negligence, uh, all your information is out there, and I forget it's, its name, address, phone number, uh, social security number. Uh, so it's not just your current address, it's all those other addresses. Just think of when you go to, what did I try to do one time? More than one time, I went someplace and <clears throat> the information popped up. Well, in order to prove who I was, <clears throat> the information popped up and said, okay, you have to prove who you are. Uh, here are some addresses. Which address did you live at? Here are some bank accounts or credit <coughs> accounts. 
which one of these did you have? Uh, these are cars that you registered. Uh, which one of these is a car that you... And I forget... Uh, I forget if I was trying to get a credit report before you can get them now once a year from these three. They're required by law to give it to you if you apply, ask them for it each year. Um, it was something like that. I couldn't... You know, okay, addresses I know. You know, I, you know, I used to live in Belton, Missouri, and I used to live in Miami, Florida. I used to live in Orlando, Florida. I used to live in Carrollton, Texas. I used to live in these various places. Yes, I remember. Uh, when I was a baby, I lived in California. Uh, but accounts that I had, bank accounts, or I'm not sure it was bank accounts, but it was some type of accounts. Which one of these did you, you know, Fuck, I don't know. I, I can look at my billfold see what I have now, but I don't know what I had years ago, you know. So, there you have it. Um, oh, like I think I said, or was getting at, they don't, they're not going to help you fix anything. You can get this free credit monitoring service, and that's it. They're not going to help you fix anything. But just remember, if you uh, accept their offer of the their credit monitoring service, you have to agree not to sue them. And what are the other, other things, some other things? But you know the thing that really pissed me off, the fact that they gave me a date next week to sign up for their monitoring service. I already have a monitoring service, you know, because of the TransUnion. Yeah, I think I mentioned, I'm not sure if I followed through with it. I was going to pop up that and say, hey, and such and such a date. But there were so many. Find 23 million. Uh, TransUnion must pay 60 million. Uh, what is this? Uh, I mean, there's just so many that I couldn't uh, couldn't pull that information up. So, oh, what pissed me off is the fact that they gave me a date that I have to go back. See, I don't need the credit monitoring service, but uh, I had no idea of suing. I've never sued anybody in my life. I have no intention of suing anybody. But the fact that you have to agree that you can't sue them and the other things makes me want to fucking sue them. But I've seen several uh, several things. It's always the same thing. Uh, if you go into a class action suit the lawyers, and I understand, by the way, that when they take on some type of a thing like this, the law firms that they have are going to spend a ton of money getting depositions and uh, all of that type of stuff. I understand that, but they get the tons of money, and the people who they are supposedly, you know, getting the remedies for always it's the same thing uh yeah you'll get uh five dollars ten dollars you know and the lawyers get a lot of stuff needs to be changed in the united states and we've gone the wrong direction and i think we've gone about as far in the wrong direction as we can now. I think this is it. Now, it could be worse in other countries. I mean, in other countries, it could be worse, but for, because of our democratic uh, system and our history or whatever, I think this is about as far as we'll go. 
and maybe, of course, we may sit here for a while. Well, maybe after President Obama is impeached or, or I mean, President Trump is impeached or resigns, uh, one of which will happen before, before long. Uh, we may sit here for a while with this going on, but eventually we will start moving the other direction. And we've never gone too far to the left yet. We haven't gone far enough to the left. We've never, even during the Depression, and of course Republicans, oh, you think they hated uh, President Obama, you think they hated President Clinton, oh, you think they hate Hillary Clinton, the Republicans, Franklin D. Roosevelt, oh my God, because he was one of them, you know, an aristocrat, a person with money, and uh, he instituted, you know, bank reforms, bank holidays, closed the banks for a few days, and then guaranteed everybody that everybody would get their money from the banks, that the banks wouldn't be allowed to fail, that everybody would get their money. He uh, put Social Security into effect. All these types of things, and the Republicans for years and years could not stand to even hear his name. They, And then finally they had to sort of stop that. It was still in them. It's in their DNA, but they uh, realized, okay, we can't get a president elected. You know, we can get people on local, but we can't get a president elected or even senators. It's hard to get anybody elected, you know, by us raving about Franklin D. Roosevelt. So just kind of quiet it. And two, they had to stop. You know, it used to be, oh, Social Security, uh, communism, oh, terrible. They finally had to, oh, no, well, we're in favor of Social Security. Uh, Yes, we're in favor of Social Security, uh, but but we want to change it. We we want to fix it. Uh, we want to make sure it's stable and secure by by uh, giving you an individual account, and and you'll deal with Wall Street and the uh, the brokers and the bankers. They'll they'll take care of your money for you. It'll be in your name and your account. Oh sure, there'll be fees, and there has to be fees for taking care of your money, and then uh, that didn't fool the American people. So we will swing, I'm sure, to the left, but we won't go as, we're not going to go to the dictatorship or the proletariat. You're kind of suspicious about somebody who, yes, but we won't go that far. I wouldn't mind going as far as the kind of system, of course, not exactly the system. You know, we, we have our own democratic. By the way, every Republican out there, when I say we have our democratic system, their heads explode. We are not a democracy. We are not a democracy. This is a republic. This is a republic. Please don't say it's a democracy. We have a republic, basically have a republican form of government. That is that we elect representatives, we elect people who supposedly are supposed to look out after our interest and whatever. But we're not entirely, we have New England states that people go to the uh, town hall meeting and make decisions and it's uh, the people voting. But Republicans go. That's why I just kind of like to, kind of like to say it. That we are a democracy. We are a democracy. Oh, they fucking hate it because it sounds like Democrat or Democratic or whatever. Anyway, I pissed off as much as many of as you can. By the way, I'll I'll mark this as. Uh, so no ads appear. I'm not trying to make any money off of passing on some information that you that you should be aware of. 
and I think we need to reinforce that closing bell situation. So we're not going to go that far to the left, but you know, that's up there like that. And some scaffolds would really, you know, you put some scaffolds up there, have the nooses hanging down, and then at the end of every day, people like the uh, Equis, Equifax uh, executives that knew that uh, they were going to be announcing that, and, that half of the American citizens had their personal data stolen. Uh, and so these executives sell off stock. Uh, which I'm sure is a crime, and I think the penalty for the crime should be, they should get to go up there when the closing bell is going to ring. You have all the stockbrokers and everybody looking up there at that wonderful platform, and then you just take these executives out and put the rope around their neck, and, and remember, the stock market is open five days a week and every day they have the closing bell that rings we could send some other people up there money laundering people that take drug money uh, people that deal with Russian banks to do money, money laundering uh, oh there's a lots of lots of people you know that would help with the population problem too you know, if we, you know, put the death penalty into effect for those type of crimes, if Republicans are worried about too many foreign immigrants coming into the United States, that there's too many people here, we could be depleting the population and making, you know, making lots of rooms for these other people. Because I, I don't think... It, very many of those people get up on the platform there for the New York Stock Exchange closing bill. Uh, those people, foreigners that are coming in here, I think they're the people that have the the food carts out on the street, the food trucks out on the street, the people that are cutting your grass, the people that are uh, out there in the summertime up on top of reap, reap uh, roofing your home and uh, out in the fields harvesting the foods that we need. I think those are where those foreigners that are coming and, and creating, they come in and they create small businesses or whatever. I don't think we would have to use the scaffolds for them. And we could... Uh... Yes. Man, it gives me such pleasure. Thank you for watching.